Agent Productions presents White Devil Podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to White Devil Minicast number four. And joining me once again, as always... Oh, sorry, I ruined that. I burped in the middle of the intro. So, no, you... you well, well, here and joining me, as always, is Retro Kaiser. <laughs> yep, it's me. It's me! It's me! It's the, no, it's not the D.I. Double G. That's a, that's a bloody someone else's gimmick. It's it's me! It's the guy from this place who also works at that place. And sometimes here, because I'm not Hanu, I'm not every other people that, that appears on it. No disrespect to them, I like them. I am James T. Kaiser! And that sounded weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, nice. Sounded like a rusted gate opening or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Eh. Well, it's a little bit, maybe. You just gotta oil up them vocal cords. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I don't like the way I said oiled up there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to be doing in this uh, White Devil minicast? This is going to be kind of a different White Devil minicast because we're doing our very first dual topic uh, podcast, which means we have two topics we want to talk about. Uh not not to be confused with us um, and commencing a, in a duel. Yes, no, no. This is not no, a fight no. to the death podcast. <laughs> duel as in do a a l, not do e do you uh, do you a l, not do you e l. Okay. No, so, I don't. Yes. So <laughs> sorry, you didn't catch that joke, didn't you? Do you e l? And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, 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 you're 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 real fast today. So, okay, so today what we're going to be doing is that we have two topics. I have a topic, Kaiser has a topic. Uh, my topic is lost, cancelled, and removed videos, or maybe more appropriately, lost and removed videos and cancelled uh, YouTube series, uh, where, we, where we will be talking about my videos and things that no longer are available on the site, why they're not available anymore. And Kaiser has his own little special topic today, which is called Classic Movies, which is interesting. And we, the reason we decided to do a dual topic was because Kaiser has a lot to say about the cult classic movies. I'm not as well versed, although some of these, as we discussed pre-podcast, I'm actually kind of familiar with, so I, I'll, I'll be chiming in on those. And so, but this is something I wanted to talk about. So let's let's move on to the first topic, which is the uh, the lost and removed videos and cancelled series. So, in case people listening to this podcast have missed the uh, have uh, missed the boat or come in late to the party, I've been doing YouTube videos for eleven years now. Uh, so last year was my tenth anniversary, uh, and uh, so so those of you who are confused. The, if you've been doing this uh, 11 years, why does it say that this channel has only been around since 2009? That's because in 2009 I lost my original two channels and I had to recreate the new one. Uh, and in my haste to recreate the, that one, there were some videos that I never bothered re-uploading. Some, uh, some, some were done by choice, like the old webcam, uh, the Hunted Webcam show. I don't know if you remember that one, uh, uh, Kaiser. I remember it. That was old. And I remember when I was watching that, I was like, hmm, well, who's this American guy talking about stuff? <laughs> Even though I'm not then, American. <laughs> and then I had another friend saying, he's from Finland. I was like, he's from Finland, and he's living in Scotland. Living in Scotland! <laughs> well, that was before Scotland, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Scotland was 2012. But the thing is... Um, the, the old webcam show, which was called the Hunter Webcam Show, like, I, I only re-uploaded, like, a handful of episodes that some people really, really wanted to see. So, but the, my priority at the time were, like, the like the cartoons and stuff. And some of the list and maybe some of the rant videos that I was particularly proud of at the time. So, um, so something got... So some things are... So the, the point I'm getting at, the, the, in the middle of this introduction, what I was getting at is that when you've been on, on YouTube, as long as I have, of course, not all of my videos are on YouTube anymore. And broadly speaking, you know, if you're wondering, like, you saw a video, video by me and you're not seeing it anymore, why is it not on the channel anymore? Well, this can be, there, there's a quick answer for post-2012 and pre-2012 videos. Post-2012... If, if, it, if it's a video you saw by me and you can't find it anymore, uh, it was probably a movie review that got uh, blocked 
geo-blocked in other countries and I had to take it down because of it because that's the thing with movie reviews. That, it, like that happened with my Terminator, uh, tr my, when I reviewed the first three Terminator movies, that video had to be taken down and I haven't gotten around to re-uploading it yet, so I, I gotta do that in the near future, <laughs> for instance. <laughs> And if it's a pre-2012 video that you, you're wondering, well, why isn't it on here, then it's probably a top 10 video, and the reason it's not on here anymore is because uh, I've remade the, list, I remade the list video and removed the old one, and the reason for that is because, uh, you know, whether or not, like, an old list video will be left on the, on the channel is entirely uh, based on whether or not the new video is intended to replace it. If it's not, like with the He-Man, when, when I read it, the top 10 and bottom 10 He-Man videos list, for instance, like I didn't remove the originals because, well, number one, because they were still pretty good, but also because they only dealt with the first season, so the originals, that is. So that's why uh, they were worth keeping around because the new versions were talking about like both seasons of the show. Okay. And so the thing is, uh, just because so something gets removed, like nothing is really ever lost at HM Productions. Like everything, like something like before 2009, I might have to dig a bit harder, like except for the cartoons. The cartoons kind of have like a special place of honor, but everything is still like uh, stored away on an external hard drive or the old stuff probably burned on some CD I have lying around. So, like I said, I really have to dig for it. <laughs> By the way, that is not a good way to store it. Right, well, I picture that. Yep. Every time I hear someone say something like that, I'm always picturing the storeroom at the end of the, one of the Indiana Jones movies. The first one, yeah, Raiders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so nothing is so most of the time nothing is ever truly lost at H M Productions, with one exception, which is the first video we're going to talk about. And we technically, I, I wanted to start with this one because we've technically discussed this. Um, on one of our Let's Plays, I don't remember which one. But one of my... Speaking of, you, you already introduced it. It was one of the Glasgow videos, okay? And when I, was, when I was in Glasgow, I had the laptop with me, and that's when I was creating the uh, History of Video Games series, and I was doing a bunch of other random videos. Like, those were webcam videos, but those were not part of the, um, the Honda webcam show, which was a completely different thing, which I did back in 2007 to 2009, roughly. Uh... Uh, but uh, the 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 video I'm talking about. So I did a couple of list videos as well, and a few a few of those that I I've kept around and still are good. I had the largest animals uh, two parter uh, video. Oh no, well those weren't list videos perhaps, but in the traditional sense, but it sort of were. But I had the top ten and bottom ten um, plot twist videos. You remember those? Mm hmm. Yes. Okay, and then there was one which I and I feel really, really bad about this because I had fully intended because I had plans. Kids, it's dangerous to have plans because when they go awry, mm -hmm. awry you know, it's 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 always uh, bad. But I had made this video called the Top Seven Police Academy Films, and what it was, I took all the seven Police Academy movies and I basically just ranked them from worst to best. That was the video, and I used. I used, uh, well, I shot, well, it was a vlog, so I was, so it was a video image of me talking over it. I used still images that I could find from the internet, and I was also using the Police Academy theme song in the background, and it was a good video. Um, when I came back from Glasgow, uh, this was in 2012, and this is actually a huge shout out, by the way, for at this point to Sendu, because 2012 was when my video production quality, like, really jumped up a jumped up quite a few levels and that was entirely thanks to Sendu who got my first like video capture cord and you know huge props to him you know huge props to Sendu like without him H, you know my videos would not be the the way they are today so you know thanks that, that's thanks same here actually yeah Sendu's a wonderful person yeah yeah S Sendu deserves a huge credit for making my channel what it is today uh so so there um uh, hoping the guy comes back soon uh, uh, to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so once I had this video capture technology at, at my disposal, I thought, hey, that list video, it's pretty good, but now I can video capture and I have all the Police Academy movies on DVD. I should remake this list using the video from those uh, movies. And so, well, here's the thing that happened. Of course, I had the laptop uh, from Glasgow, and I ended up giving it to my sister because she needed a laptop. And, you know, all my Glasgow videos were stored there. 
then I don't remember the time scale of this. It's been like long enough that I've forgotten the fine details. But at some point, that fucking laptop died. Um, it, it was, and I was at fault because I was trying to install a game on it that had some really fucking uh, terrible copy protection software on it. It corrupted something and the fucking whole computer died. Uh, a friend of, we had to call in a friend of ours who's really good with computers. She was able to resurrect it, but in the process, we lost everything that was on the hard drive. Including, Ooh. yes, including all my Glasgow videos. Now, the good thing about YouTube is, as long as the video is still on YouTube, as long as you haven't removed it, even if it's blocked or copyright striked or anything, you can still download it. Uh, you, 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 as the guy who uploaded it, you can still download it back to your computer. So, that's a thing. So, all my Glasgow videos are backed up now. They were not backed up when I suddenly started working I, I, one day I just got the urge, hey, now would be a good time to do that Police Academy, uh, to redo the Police Academy fil uh, film list video. And my first task that I did was remove it from YouTube. And then, only then, I realized, oh fuck, the, uh, I had it on the laptop. Because I started looking for it in my fucking like, external hard drive, it wasn't there, and poof, it's gone. And that was that was something I was planning to do on some of my other old list videos that were still where I kind of agree with where the things I was saying were good, but the videos were you know the old list videos. What it usually is is me talking with the movie poster there. Uh, those are the pre twenty twelve ones. So I was planning to do the same thing with other movies, with other lists and things like that. But because the police academy, because of what happened to the police academy list video. Uh, I was so disheartened, I never ever did do that. And that just fucking sucked. Now technically, technically there is a version of this list that still exists, it's on, it's on my blog, it's all text, the order is the same that it was in the video, but I still, you know, that to this day, I feel really fucking shitty over because I really like that video. That was a really, really one of that was one of the best videos I did in Glasgow, and now it's gone forever. And now, luckily, after that, I wised up and I saved all the other videos that I had made in Glasgow that were still on YouTube. But man, like, well, that, that that one really hit me hard. <laughs> well, I've got a story that's similar to that one, except I am glad that it's long gone and deleted. All right, yeah. <laughs> well, late one night, I was drinking. <laughs> yes. All good stories start like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I thought I went to bed, and I wake up, sorry, but the next morning, I only realized that I had posted a video at 4 o'clock in the morning while I was drunk. Yes, don't worry, it wasn't anything rude. Oh, oh it, it, it was rude if you understood what I was saying. How, 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 far, the, how long ago was this? This was like... I want to say 2009. Okay, yeah, ancient history. <laughs> <laughs> well, either 2009 or 2011. It's I know because um, Darabka watched the video and he brings it up occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> what are friends for, really? <laughs> <laughs> but the case was was um, the, the the thing of the video was I was very drunk. I was slurred. I was I was given the middle fingers up. At least I think I was given the middle fingers up. This is a while ago. I could have just you know just been the whole hand. Yeah. <laughs> <just been> <laughs> okay. And I was speaking very bad German. <laughs> oh, the Kaiser actually ta speaks Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was very bad too. And what I said, which was translated to uh, by Durabka, was spread your Eggs for Retro Kaiser. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm actually genuinely impressed that you were able to say that <laughs> in German. <laughs> you know, I could have had Google Translator up. I was drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. All but right. the, the, I removed the video purposely because I was just like, this is so stupid. I'm not keeping it. And, um,. It was on a laptop that is no longer used. Oh, yeah. A laptop that, um... Hang on, I'm going to get the webcam out of this because I've still got it here. So you have to edit out the silence. It's... It's on a laptop that, um... Well... 
it happened the same way to you. All the data got corrupted. Oh yeah. All because of um. But there's a reason why the data got corrupted on it. Don't know if you can see it. It's got the. Look at that. Oh dear. Yeah, it's completely fucked up. Look at that. And there's a um. There's a funny story to how that happened. I woke up one morning with my laptop up. I really needed to go toilet. And so I jumped out of bed, and when I jumped out of bed, I accidentally karate kicked the laptop in half. <laughs> <laughs> Not even, like, uh, figuratively, literally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that was... Those are... about some high food, eh? All right. Well, those are Kaiser's drunken ex escapades. But do you think we should talk about, like, a... Like a um... I got the heaviest story from my from my side side now out of the way. Maybe you should lighten the mood a bit. Let's talk about some of the cult movies that you've been collecting because you've oh, been, absolutely. Yeah, you've been rating been on video. A... You've been rating uh, stores for classic old movies, and some of these I've heard of. Some of them I'm not so familiar with, like Black Christmas and Scarecrows. So yep. Can we talk about those? Well, you can you can say say if you say something about those, but then well, I might bring up one of the ones that I do know that I have actually watched because I'm not because I'm not a cult film aficionado. I, I like cult films, don't get me wrong, but it's just that I haven't seen that many. Okay, but you yeah, I'm more of the cult film aficionado here. I'm the one that more likes some of the obscure and not as well liked or well known. All right, so like I'm not gonna lie, some of the popular mainstream movies are absolutely fucking terrible. Like that um. It was this movie about this pregnant lady who had an alien baby, and it kept on feeding her, um, telling her a force for her mind. I forget what that movie's called, but that movie was garbage. It made me want to get up and instead of turn off the TV, it made me want to punch out my television screen and throw the TV away. Okay. <laughs> I forget what that movie. But that's a that's another topic for another <laughs> for another time. Okay, well, a couple but, of the yeah. ones you mentioned were Black Christmas and Scarecrows. I know nothing about Scarecrows. I know about Black Christmas that it's kind of like a spiritual um, predecessor to the movie ha ha Halloween. Yep. And um, all I have to say is about Black Christmas is it's a little bit overrated, if you ask me. Oh, is it? An overrated yeah. cult movie. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like Blade Runner. <laughs> but I'm tish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I know maybe one of these days I'll go into depth why I don't like Blade Runner maybe that should much. Maybe we explain what the movie's whatever. about first, yeah. shouldn't we? Yeah. It's just essentially there's a, a sorority house and there's a stalker just calling and making obscene call, calls like, I want to eat your doggy! Which I just self-censored myself that. He doesn't say doggy. And I sound more like a like a rapist you heard it, don't I? Mmm! Have you? I will! Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> well, that is scary. Yoda as a serial killer. <laughs> oh, dear. The lightsaber slasher! <laughs> yes. There wouldn't be much blood, though, because, you know, lightsabers burn the wounds, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so that was all you had to say on Black Christmas. What, what, what Scarecrows? When, 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 was it, when was it made? Who was it made by? <laughs> What's it about? Done. Yeah. I wasn't done with um the Black Christmas. We well, you, well, so, well, to be fair, you started with all I have to say about Black Christmas. And it's, it's a little overrated. So sorry if I made the mis if I made the <laughs> incorrect conclusion that that's all you wanted to say about it. <laughs> How about I should explain why I think it's a bit overrated? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. The one thing is um there's way too much plot going on in this movie that it feels like it's a little bit all over the place. To where it's sort of hard to, um, it's like, what is this, it's like it's trying so much that you don't know what this movie is trying to be. So you got like a plot about some father whose girl was mur who was the first victim of the movie, in a very awesome and very grisly death, mind you. And um, you got something about a, um, this woman here who's doing something, but we're not sure why. Then we got this incredible drunk punk woman. Who ends up being sick? Like it's got several plots, but they're not very good. Would, would you the say? Would you say that the movie is all overridden? Definitely, it could have been about um. They could have cut that out, which would have. Sh but then again, it would have made the movie incredibly short, so I can actually see why they overrid it oh, a okay, little bit. Yeah. But I mean, the one I mean, that, 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 I, is, that is, that is, I think, well, to be, you know, to give a little bit of um. I, I, to give a little bit of credit to like people who have to who who have to write well nobody has to write but who want to write like a slasher horror movie thing like the hard part about it is 
How do you make how do you make the audience care about the characters enough that you're invested in the fact that they're all going to get killed? Uh, but how do you not uh, oversell it to the point where the audience will be? Uh, it's it's a fine balance. It's trying to find the balance where you care about the characters die, yeah. but, but you don't become completely disengaged when they do. And also, not yeah. to mention, this was a bit of a new thing when it comes to movies back then as well, like a bit newer. So it was a bit more difficult to find the balance because you haven't got really, you haven't really got anything to learn from. Like, oh, Hall- yeah. like you got like Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth. You've clearly learned from the previous movies of what not to do and what to do with the movie. Yeah. But there was this one interesting subplot about a um a pregnant um lady who's who's um I don't, I don't know slept with some like rich piano guy. Like that that I don't make it sound like to be that interesting. Don't I? So I'm just going to skip that part, but. Um, the second half of the movie was actually where it picked up. Like when, of course, when they killed off some of the sorority sisters, when it just gone down to, you know, the more interesting parts. Interesting parts. Ooh, <laughs> the interesting plots. Like it, it, it felt more like um, like it knew what it was doing. Oh yeah. And um, the thing that I did like about it is um, because I've watched more like more modern horror movies. Like you tend to know what some of the tropes are. And of course, this is like one of those movies that sort of started some of those tropes as well. So if you if you apply like what you've watched from modern movies and apply it to this, it can actually be a really fun mystery movie. Like trying to pin pinpoint all the clues of who, who all the serial killers are, because a serial killer isn't like some demonic creature from hell or some child's toy. Um, <laughs> he's it's an actual person, so it's fun just listening to some of the things, like really paying close attention to what people have to say sort of, you know, pinpoint of who it is, like, I had a pretty good idea of who I thought the killer was, and, um, whatnot, because I paid attention, it's like, and the funny thing is, if, if some of the, if some of the cast or characters paid attention to what they were saying, they could have easily avoided some of the problems they went into in the movie, like, character-wise, but, oh, yeah, it had a fun, and, as I said before, the deaths in this one are incredibly grisly, not because they're, not, or, like, incredibly gory, but it's because they're ultra-realistic, like, it's not like um, a guy gets his head chopped off a machete, then he starts running around like a dead chicken. No, it's some really horrifying grisly stuff. Like, a girl spots and true in the house, she gets strangled but with a shower curtain. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and of course, the killer hid the bodies in, in the attic to where you see all these rotting corpses, and it, it just looked nasty. And of, and, of course, no one ever thought to... um look for them in the attic. They're all like, oh, they're not in the house, so they're not in their room, so they might be somewhere else. And this is, oddly enough, also one of the horror movies to actually make me laugh. Like, there's a very, like, not ironically, like, the the punk drunk girl, as I mentioned before, like, it's like one of the police officers is like, oh, so what's, so what's your um sorority house called? And she goes, it's a new one called Fellatio, or something like that. <laughs> like, like, that part isn't funny, but it's like, it's to the part where, because this I is thought that was like pretty the, funny. The <laughs> it is, but she was telling it to an obviously a stupid cop, and the was like, she he sent the report into the um to the to like this thing, and it was actually done perfectly well, like very awkward and disturbing at the same time because um the it, it happened after they found like a dead child in like a park, Ooh. and and then suddenly you hear like this police officer laughing, and he was like, what's it, what the hell is his problem? Because he's because he's um. He did a good job because his laughter seemed to be genuine. And then, then they were showing all the ups around. Like, <laughs> then, then they went to the cops. Like, yeah, what did she say? The sorority house was oh, fellatio. It's like <laughs> they all started cracking up laughing. And he's like, uh oh, fellatio means something dirty, doesn't it? <laughs> so, it was, <laughs> okay. it felt like really. Gen- it didn't seem forced or anything, but yeah, that mess of me talking about it like every time I'm on the podcast. I apologize, listeners. So it's overrated, but it's still not a terrible movie. Hey, just yeah, because yeah. someone's overrated doesn't mean that it's bad. Yeah, that 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 always that's always um, that's always like really hard. It's always really hard to talk about something. I mean, uh, I, I, in fact, I don't I don't personally I kind of don't like the word overrated anymore. But I do think like some things are overly praised. That doesn't mean that they're bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, so I mean, do, you still go, do, do you still want to go into Scarecrows? Oh, definitely. About- this is the one I'm I'm looking forward to talking about. And this one actually suffers sort of the same problems as the movie I mentioned prior. 
Okay, um, when, 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 was, when was Scarecrow's? Because I don't know anything about this movie. So when was it made and who was it made by? What it's about? Um, you know I'm not good at remembering directors. I'm going to go grab the DVD case and be very unprofessional. <laughs> Even more unprofessional knowing that it's a Blu-ray like, case. You, you don't have to be case. too specific. Just give us a general like ballpark. When was, when was this movie made? <laughs> uh, this is just more for the director because it's written flat out on the box. Oh, never mind. It's right down here. I didn't need the... I could have easily snuck it out without even mentioning that I was gone. <laughs> it is done by it is done by William Wesley. Okay, I never heard of him. Yeah, I never heard of him. Like I may have watched some of his other movies without realizing, but yeah. Well, are, there, a, are there scarecrows in the movie? Is what is probably my first question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are, and not all of them are just the typical ones on the poll. Some of them are quite living. Okay, so it's 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 about killer scarecrows then. Yes. Okay, good. And that's actually a bit of a gross oversimplification, but I'll get to that later. The movie starts off with bank robbers flying flying out in a getaway plane with a very huge heist of five million, like between two to five million dollars, which was a lot for the late eighties. Like this is a nineteen eighty eight movie. So this is, uh, this movie, is an eighties movie. Thank you. We got. We, yeah. We're slowly getting through all the questions, ladies and gentlemen. Nineteen eighty eight. All right. So, yeah, all they're, right. They're yeah. flying through, and for some reason, one of them um, betrays them. You know, the typical betray, like aha, sets a smoke bomb off in the plane and yeah. di- jumps out of the um the plane with a parachute with the money. Yeah. No. No. And honor, then no, turns, no honor among thieves. Yeah. No. And then, and he lands on a farm full of scarecrows, like an old abandoned farm. And of course, the people in the plane are like that bastard, Rah! and they have to land the plane, and they go after him naturally. What they didn't realize is they stepped onto a, um, as cheesy as it sounds, a haunted farm. Ah, yep, okay. <laughs> and and like run by free scarecrows. Okay. I know that sounds, but but they're a bit, they they are a bit more than scarecrows. Like if you don't mind me spoiling, spoiling, like they they really they're like scarecrows, but they got the spirits of like the farmers in them. Ah, okay. And of course, they don't like them. And they're very sadistic scarecrows. Like, of course, they go searching for them. People start dying off in them. Like, it's a very simple plot. But and but the way that people get killed is quite gruesome, actually. If you think about it, they um get gutted, stuffed with straw, and they get turned into mind-controlled zombies of the um scarecrows. So sort of like voodoo. Uh, that, yeah, that sounds. In equal parts, really disturbing and also kind of stupid, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done a lot better. Like, if you describe it, it's done, but when you watch it, it's actually more well done. So, 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 like, so, is it, so, would you say that it's a legitimately scary movie, or are you saying that it's, it's kind of dumb, uh, dumb, fun kind of horror movie? It, it is, it's serious, but it is dumb and fun at the same time. Okay, interesting. And, um, but the thing is, it's, it's like, it's got like, like, I'd say shot, like, the gore and it's very mild, but it's still awesome to watch. Like, okay. it's like, no one, like, it's more like knowing what's happening to them than seeing what's happening to them. And the, and the thing is, like, the thing I thought interesting was that the scarecrows couldn't really be killed. Their spirits just, tr- they just transferred the spirit into another scarecrow, which is, I'm guessing the reason why they kill off people is for fresh bodies. Because their bodies ah. are um, deteriorating. Interesting. Interesting. The f- yeah, the, the, actually, I like that. I, I, I'm the. I, I'm not a gore hound, and I'm. I'm a big believer in what you don't show is scarier than what you do show. So. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, I actually, I actually like this. Maybe I should. Maybe I gotta check this movie out some of these days. Yeah. But the thing <laughs> I do like about the scarecrows is they just don't, you know, flat out attack you. They, they, they more attack you mentally because they got like these weird telepathic powers because you know magic. Oh yeah. Okay. To where they really mess with your mind and, until you until you feel like scared and alone, then they stab you. Okay. But there's also this real horrific scene at the end because there was like this one of these bank robbers had like night vision goggles in order to find them. Oh. And of course he he appears towards the end, except he is like a scarecrow, but he's like he's got no flesh on him. He's he's a, he's he's like a skinless person wearing night vision goggles, and it's just like. The way that they showed it was very horrifying. It made me flinch a little, but I but I knew if I paused it, it would it look awfully silly. Like it was just like one of those sudden sort of quick things. Oh yeah. To where you don't get to pay much attention to see like all the fancy effects because it would have ruined the illusion. Oh yeah. yeah. But 
my legit problem with it is the pacing in the first half of the movie was a little bit too rushed. Oh, really? It just felt like they quickly... But the second half was a bit more portioned, a bit better. But, um, yeah. The other, the other thing is, like, I reckon... One thing... Oh, sorry. I reckon um, this is how Black Christmas would have been if it was, like, you know, sped up a little bit. Like, it would have felt rushed at the same time. And the thing is, Scarecrows, it only runs for about 80 minutes. It's not a long movie whatsoever. Oh, really? And it felt, okay. It felt more like I was watching, like, a, a short story more than a movie. Like okay. a Tales from the Crypt or a very severely more fucked up edition of Goosebumps. <laughs> okay, that sounds... That sounds interesting. Yeah, that, that I, I kind of I, I would assume a lot of people, especially with the setup to the horror thing, is like a lot of people would probably. That's always kind of the hard part. Again, that's a hard part to in movie in horror movies to get right. Like like you said, that it feels like it's uh, rushed. But like I, that's the thing. A lot of people probably get a little impatient during that like lull during the first half of the movie when there's not a lot happening because. But, yeah, but then again, that part, like we said about Black Christmas, is that you have to set up the characters somehow, so that... Yeah, you do. So you have a feeling for them when they die. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because I, I know when you've got a perfect... I know when you've got a perfect villain is when you don't like... If you, is when you don't like the bad guy over the, um, the heroes. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. <laughs> a, lot of that, a lot of times villains are my favorite characters in any movie. But... <laughs> But yeah, and one last complaint about Scarecrows is that the production quality looks terrible. Like this may have been made in 1988, but it looks like it was made in 1978 because it looked like it was very low budget. Oh yeah, well that that tends to be the case. Well, you brought it up, brought it up that this is a cult classic movie. Is it? Is it? Mm -hmm. So is it? Is it very well known then? Because I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it until I saw it at a convention. And all I have to say is, um, it is also one that is actually worth watching. Uh, it, yeah, despite all the complaints you had about it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hey, I had a lot of complaints about um, Black Christmas as well, and I thought that was still worth watching. Heck, I even called that movie overrated. Oh, yeah, But would yeah. I call Scarecrow's underrated? Um, I'd say it's more of in the middle. I say... <laughs> that sounds weird, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, the whole thing about a cult classic... Uh, this is what, and why nowadays, especially, I have a bit of a hard time, like uh, with the cl with the whole cult classic thing, is that a cult classic or a cult film is you know a film that doesn't do so well in its initial release, but then over time develops a very you know fervent uh, group of admirers. Like for instance, to bring it back to Blade Runner, of course, Blade Runner bombed at the box office, but then when it went into video distribution, it started to get this very strong following. Uh, and now, now, now people, hey, people, people horror, that's yep. That's a lot of horror movies in general as well. Because thank goodness for, for well, we can all be grateful for video rental stores for back in the day. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> now none of them exist anymore. But it's like that's the thing. Like it's becoming harder and harder to classify. Well, what is a cult classic? But I think that has to be the only prerequisite is that it's a movie that bombs when it's when it sort of had its time in the sun. Which sounds really funny when we're talking about mm -hmm. horror movies, but it's like a bomb bombs when it has its time in the sun. But then over time, people grow an appreciation for it, as opposed to like a sleeper hit, which is like a movie that doesn't have a lot of promotion, but then word of mouth makes it into a hit. Uh, I have a hard time, like I can't really think of off the top of my head a good example of that. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we're talking about when we're talking about cult classics. So you're saying that there is like a that the scarecrows also has like a cult following that people look at it at a, as a cult uh, film and as, as the thing is like is there a difference between a cult classic and a cult film like you know Blade Runner has become a cult classic because it's considered such a uh, hugely influential on science mo science fiction movies in general even though it fa bombed at the box office uh, but cult films are just like fil people just admire the film for what it is uh, even if it even if it bombed back in the day so so where 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 would Scarecrow so Scarecrow's has that kind of following is what you're saying? Yes, otherwise I probably wouldn't have been part of like the cult film series. On <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Well, we've talked about two movies now, so I guess we should talk about um, another video, or ra rather, let's talk about some a couple of video series that I was planning on working on at some point, and they ended up getting cancelled. <laughs> and okay. Ooh. 
And I suppose we can start with this one. Uh, this one might interest you as well. That did you know that I had a Iron Maiden album review series on YouTube at one point? No, I had not. I was aware of all your Iron Maiden list on your blog. Oh yeah, I mean, I have the only Iron Maiden video that I think I have online anymore is that I do have a top ten list of my favorite albums. Uh, that list maybe maybe deserves a re. An update, but yes, at one point I did have, and I have like uh, reviewed every single Iron Maiden album on my blog. So this is another thing that where the video, although it has now been removed, uh, it's not lost, but it's it's been removed. Uh, uh, there were two videos, um, but but you can still, if you want to know what I feel about each Iron Maiden album, you can just go read, a, read about it in my blog. But this was something I don't even remember when this was. This must have been possibly 2010, 2011. Uh, so what I was planning to do uh, was I was going to review every single Iron Maiden album that had come out at the time. I don't remember if Final Frontier had come out yet, uh, so it might have even been like 2009. So I made I got through I got two videos in this series in before I, I had it had to be canceled. And so I, so I got Iron Maiden done. I got Killers done. They used scan uh, pictures from like the from the uh, CD booklets that I had, and I talked about um, uh, the individual tracks and things like that. Oh, yep. I remember the um, number of the beast one. I never got up to number of the beast. I only got up to. Then why the hell did I see all these scans from then? I'm getting all my history mixed up, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so I got two videos in, and then. Either both or one of the two videos that I got uploaded, like it been this this was a long time ago, so I, I, my memory is a little hazy on this. Got, one of the videos got one of the videos or both the videos got blocked because, of course, oh. while I was talking about the about the Iron Maiden albums, of course, I had Iron Maiden music playing in the background, and some people at this point might want to ask the qu obvious question: Well, why not just re-upload the videos without the music in the background? Well, the thing is. That, w that would have been missing the point of the video because it's the same thing when I do like a movie review when I have like footage of the movie uh, on, on it to illustrate and demonstrate what I'm talking about. Uh, the same way if you're going to do a music review, you can do it without playing the music. I mean, it's been done, but it would have kind of, it kind of would have wrecked the whole idea I had uh, for the video. So I don't know, maybe I could have done it, but... I decided, again, it was one of those situations that when one of the videos got blocked, I was so disheartened about it that I just decided, you know, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do any more of these if I, can, if I can make it the way I want it. And I've had, a hard, I've had bad history with licensed music on YouTube. These days I know to avoid it. But like, for instance, the, the original Robot Master cartoons, like um, the Robot Master cartoons that I did, they used to have uh, licensed music in the intros and outros. And when they all got I blocked... Uh, yeah. When the He-Man theme. No, no, not the He-Man theme. Robot Masters. No? No. Oh. Uh, no. Robot Masters? Yes, the Robot Master cartoons. The Mega Man ones. Oh. Uh. Yeah. They, they used to have licensed music in the intros and outros, uh, and they all got had to be taken down because of that, you know. Um, and uh, so I ended up having to re-upload them with Mega Man music playing over the backgrounds and uh, for, for, foregrounds because, you know, Warner Music Group does not want to, to hear even a little bit of music from us. <laughs> it doesn't want, want you to hear even a little bit of music, music from anything they own, but Capcom doesn't give a shit, so... <laughs> So, you know, but yeah, that, that's, that's another thing. And I really, I really hate it. I still have the original versions of those Robot Master cartoons uh, with the music, uh, you know, on my, you know, saved up. But like, that's always something I feel really bad about. Uh, and somebody actually asked me about that uh, Iron Maiden album review series at one point as well. But yeah, yeah, those, those are not coming back. And like I said, I've already <laughs> reviewed all the Iron Maiden albums on my blog. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you missed that, you missed that, that series. I'm, I'm surprised. I, sh I thought you would have been on that, like, white on rice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've also got a funny story about um, Iron Maiden 2 and Council Video Series. Do, do you remember the old Kaiser Records videos? Yes, I do. I like those. Yeah. 
Well, if you remember, I was meant to close off the first season with two episodes, one being a Judas Priest episode, the other being a Michael Jackson one, and I've already announced what season two was in advance, which was going to be me talking about every single Iron Maiden album up until, like, the final front... Well, every Iron Maiden album I got in my record collection. Oh, yeah. Which was up to, like, the final frontier. Yep. And, of course, that never happened. The only thing that happened during those announcements is when I did an episode on, like, my um, K-On! vinyl record box set, or the Donuts collection, yeah, as yeah. it is called. Yeah, I remember that. Those were cute. Yeah. <laughs> there was a reason for that. It's because I was posting those on something that was alternative to YouTube, one where I could, you know, you know, fully get your point up with having the music, because I like to play samples of the record, which, you know, to emphasize how it sounds and whatnot. Yeah. And because... Those accounts got removed from there, and I had to work my way back to YouTube. I decided to um try to re-upload some of those, those old episodes, see how it would work. And, of course, they all they didn't get, you know, blocked worldwide. They just got silent out. Oh, yeah, which is just as bad, basically. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah you either so, watch a, watch a movie, video or can't, can't, get it, can't watch it in most of the countries around the world. Like, literally, I think the, I, I had one video that got blocked... It was like a hundred and X number of countries, and it showed like the one country where you could watch it was Japan. <laughs> but the, like, yeah, sure, that's that's where my core audience is. <laughs> yeah. Also, when it comes to other cancelled series, for um, actually, no, actually, I'm going to continue this for a. It was very disheartening knowing that um, all your all the stuff you put so much hard work into it got um silenced. So there's probably not going to be a, a proper way where people would see the full uncut episodes of the um, old Kaiser records again. But I do have them backed up just in case. Just in I case am. I might. Just in case I make like a sneaky DVD release or some shit like that. You, you, yeah, you, you have a few of those. Do, do you still? You still have a couple of those on. Yeah, but they're the sort of the censored versions. It's all. De- it all depends on the episode, really. Yeah. Depends on who's focused. That, that was really annoying too with the Iron Maiden ones because EMI really like. <laughs> Or whoever, like, uh, you know, guards the copyright of EMI-owned music in, on fucking YouTube. Like, they came down hard because I was talking over most of the music in those videos, and they mm-hmm. still got, you know, blocked. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that the... I think that... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, like, the way I think, like, if you, if you just put, like, the whole damn track on there, I can see why those will get boxed. Bl- um, boxed. Blocked. Yep. Like, but if you just use, like, a sample of it just to, for, for, like, educational purposes, I think that's a bit different. Yeah, that was, yeah, but that's the thing. Like, you, you, with some songs, you can have, like, a little snippet of it, and nobody will blink an eye. The, but, like, for, for another one that I've had a lot of trouble with is whenever I do, try to use a Dio song in anything in the background, like, immediately, like, just blocked. But surprisingly, there's like that one little <laughs> second clip of evil eyes uh, on in my like me and Aqualung's uh, metal trivia video that that was totally fine. It did. Ha- we did. I had to re-upload it at one point, but it had nothing to do with that particular clip. Ironically, it was because I was <laughs> using footage of the Suicide Solution music video in the background, even though there wasn't even like Suicide uh, Solution. Mu- the music wasn't even playing. It was a MIDI of <laughs> Crazy Train. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but, it was, but, it was, but it was because uh, of the video, so I had to like you know I just put put in some stills of Ozzy and that's on there. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that's funny, but it's also really bad at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that, but, but that, that's the kind of shit you gotta put up with in, in YouTube. Yeah, like, it is. People wondering oh. why, why the Star Trek video that I just did is all still images. Why the Her- Hercules video I just did are you know just still images because you know. Paramount and Disney are real fucking assholes about that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of assholes, um, I've had real problems with Capcom at the moment. Oh, really? That's um, surprising. Yeah. Capcom's usually pretty chill. What, what, what did Capcom do? They give me permission to release trailers of their upcoming games on my YouTube page, but as soon as I do that, they get, like, flagged by them. I was like, you're flagging me for something you gave me official permission to post. Wow, that makes no like, sense. That makes well, yeah, you, no. you, you can, you can, you can, uh, well, you can, you can, what, what is the thing? Complain or, um, overturn that. I mean, you can, because you have the permission, uh, so, what's the word for that? What, what's the word when you, when you, uh, oppose, not oppose, um, yeah. 
Oppose, convert, not convert, definitely not convert. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, a, there's a thing you can do on YouTube because you have the permission for those. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that makes no sense. Okay. All right. And going back to Kaiser Records quickly, I've also got two missing episodes. Oh, really? Yep. Miss, this, missing this as in you through. don't have them anymore. They're missing as in I recorded them somewhere and I don't know which device it was on. <laughs> So I lost. It was also, yeah, it was, I remember the, them specifically. I did an episode for Transformers, the movie, the vinyl record, like the 80s one. Oh, yeah. And another one I did was for an album called Super Ape, which is a reggae album. And spoiler, spoiler, it's a reggae album that comes on a green record. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, um. I've also got one podcast that was missing for quite some time. It was back when me and Gexup did a wrestling podcast, which, honestly, I thought it was terrible. So who knows, maybe I purposely tried to lose it. But years and years later, I did find it, so I know where it is now. Ah, interesting. And I'm probably still not going to release it, because I still think it's bloody terrible. <laughs> All right, and it's time to talk about un more cult films. And the two that you showed me, which I have seen... Actually, there's more than, more than just two, but these two I would like to talk about, like Galaxy Quest and Dick Tracy. Hello? Yeah, I was just waiting for you to talk more. I thought you had more to say after that. No, I, I wanna, <laughs> no, 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 this is your segment, so I'm giving you the mic, basically. <laughs> yeah, Galaxy, Galaxy Dick, no! <laughs> Galaxy Dick. Level two. <laughs> well, Galaxy Quest, uh, if people don't know what that movie is, it was made in the late 90s, uh, late 90s or early 2000s. I looked it up last night. It was 1999. All right, yeah. It was on that weird, awkward um, butt crack of, of different millennia. Okay. Well, so it's, it's a movie about a bunch of actors who were on this Star Trek-like television show called Galaxy Quest. Tim Allen is like the Captain Kirk. Sigourney Weaver is the female first officer. Alan Rickman is an, uh, a, a Shakespearean actor who's been forced to play the alien on the ship. And then there's mm -hmm. the black pilot uh, kid actor. And the movie picks up like years after the show was big. And they're... Um... And again, they get... Ironically... Yep. Ironically, on the 18th anniversary of the show, which is funny enough because this year is the 18th anniversary of the movie. <laughs> okay, yeah. So they get so the cast gets hijacked by a bunch of aliens who have seen the TV show and believe that the guys are the people from the television show that they actually are that them. They have built the ship from the show, it functions the same way it did on the TV show, and they need their help because they're being terrorized by these war warlike aliens. And and this actually, I, I saw this, it's been a while, so the details are a little hazy, but I do, but it, it kind of, it's kind of poking fun at Star Trek, but at the same time, so, so it's a, so it's a sci-fi comedy uh, that does that whole meta thing a little bit, um, I sort of meta thing, like where the actors actually have to now become the characters because they're mm -hmm. basically tasked with running the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I remember like stuff like uh, when they go down on the planet and Tim Allen's like uh, he's, he's doing like you know he's rolling around like he did on the show, you know, kind of evoking mm -hmm. Star Trek the original series, and I think he drops his gun or something when he's doing that. Mm -hmm. And then when they need to sure. escape, like at the there's a da dangerous situation. They're having to figure out the teleporter, how it works, and they they <laughs> try it out on something that uh, some poor creature that explodes for an a an alien pig. Oh yeah, uh, but then they figure it out. Like so, <laughs> so I remember this. I've seen. So I remember this being a really good movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's definitely a good movie. Although it is a lot better when you actually watch Star Trek. It's funny seeing all, like all the things that they make poke fun of in this movie. Like when I first watched it back in two thousand one, back when DVD rentals were, were were new, I remember enjoying it, but not quite loving it because I fully didn't quite understand what they were making fun of. And and until like years and years later, till I actually watched the show and I watch it now and, and I was like, this is genius. This is pure genius. Oh yeah, and I didn't. Again, that was a movie that didn't do so well, but it's like the thing I hear constantly is that Star Trek fans really love it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's a piss take on Star Trek, but but 
at the same time, it pays so much down respect to the show. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's always the great thing about uh, that that that's what a good parody or spoof is. Is that uh, you know you know Mel Brooks has always always said the thing that when he did when he was doing the spoof movies of things, it's is that. He was always a fan of what he was spoofing. He would never he never did it out of malice or because he didn't like something. So he did a he did a spoof western because he loved westerns. He did a spoof Frankenstein movie because he loved Frankenstein and spoof Dracula same reason, spoof Robin Hood uh for the same reason. And a spoof on historical epics because he loved, you know, historical epics, but he he loved also, you know, he he would he, he liked to take like, take the piss out of it, like as you said. Yes. And I remember the mm-hmm. f- the finale. This might be a little bit of a shock. This might be a little bit of a spoiler, but I love the final conclusion where he basically just flies the ship through a minefield in space, drags a bunch of mines with him, and then <laughs> like <laughs> like uses that to take out the enemy armada, or maybe it was just the one ship. I don't even remember remember the details. Like I said, it's been a long while uh, since I last it was, seen it. Yeah, it was the base where the evil um, alien overlord, whatever he was, the grasshopper man, was um. Held base. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, d- d- anything else you want to add to that? Um, I'm trying to think. I know there's stuff I want to add. But Another scene I remember I'm... is the 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 black pilot kid. Who was the actor? I, I I forget who the actor for that was. I remember everyone else, but like I said, it's been a long time. I I know I've seen him somewhere, but I just can't name him. Okay, but I remember that there's like a some dangerous situation. Uh, he uh, turns out victorious, and then one of the aliens, the alien chick, starts making out with him. And then it looks like it's going really well, but then like it reveals like the alien chick has like tentacles or something. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like these weird octopus Cthulhu creatures. Yeah, but they they have these. They are able that, to that take this human appearance. That wasn't the yeah. that wasn't the black part. That was the Scotty guy. It's a, it's the same guy, isn't it? There's only four guys in the. Oh no 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 yeah yeah oh, yeah you should sure? yes I yes there was there was that one there was the, like the kind of new kid who was also kind of a loser uh, character no yeah I'd forgotten about him okay yeah there was five guys and five him. guys yeah 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 you're you're right you're right I forgot like I said it's been a while since I've seen it <laughs> I'll yep. get the details as long as I watched it last night yeah you <laughs> yeah you so you you remember the you should remember it way better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, something to add. Do you have something to add to that? <laughs> so, sorry, it's 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 funny watching that movie growing up. Like not just picking out like the Star Trek things, but like picking out some of the adult things. But there's still some things I didn't get into after the movie, like that um, like that Scotty like dude. Apparently, it was supposed to be like he was acting like some sort of hippie stoner. Don't know if that was his character or anything. I could be completely wrong. Uh, I'm mumbling up again. Damn it! But uh, but the thing that I have one complaint about the movie is the um the story of the rock monster like um like don't you feel bad for when when the rock monster gets sucked out into space with like the bunch of the um grasshopper minion dudes I don't remember a rock monster what, a, what's that, what's that the, the thing that they ran into on the planet when they were trying to figure out the teleporter that was when um Tim Allen's character got stranded behind and captured by like the little alien creatures and he was forced to battle like the giant rock monster. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't remember. I don't remember that. So sorry. Yeah. Well, he was battling him. Then he got sucked back up into the spaceship because they were trying to. That was when they're trying to figure out. That was when they're figuring out like the teleportation thing. You know, when they made the pig inside out and explode. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they brought him up. But later on, they brought the rock monster up into the battle using the same method. But the thing that was weird about it is like. I, I don't get what the rock monster's motive was whatsoever. Well, excuse me about the burp. <clears throat> yeah. But there's a reason for that. That's because the story with the rock monster was completely cut out of the movie. Yet I find out through the DVD extras, or Blu-ray extras in this case. Oh, yeah. And it turns out the reason why that monster attacked is... It turns out the reason why they made that monster attack is because he didn't like the sound of vibrations, because he's a rock, he likes to remain still and silent. And th- it's funny... With that deleted scene, because they completely do like the like the guy Alan Rickman's character, he completely does like he, he does the thing. Tim Allen's like, why is he attacking us? And he's like, he's a mo- he's probably got some sort of motive. And he's and he was like doing the whole thing, like the whole mind melt thing, like pa- like 
going into character, like, pretending to do, like, the whole mind melt thing, and just purely by a guess, and he ended up being completely right. And the other deleted scene that summed it up is when he got launched into space. The thing they cut out of when the rock monster got launched into space is they cut out what he, was say, what he said at the end. And when he got launched out, he said, Ah, finally, peace. Because in, <laughs> in the movie, they made it look like that they flat out killed him. Like, very mean-spirited. Like, to help him kill him, but deleted scenes, they, they realized that's what the rock monster wanted the whole time, was just a little peace and quiet. But you know what? Just you know tired what? This, 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 this is this just reminding me of a funny thing, because yesterday... I watched Dumb and Dumber uh, on Netflix, and I was wondering because there were cer- certain scenes that I remembered happening a little bit differently, and then I realized, like, oh, yeah, I have the extended edition on DVD. That's why this feels weird and different. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yeah. weird. so it's weird when you have, like, little things like that that get cut out of the movie that could maybe like, it is. It's improve definitely... on it. Okay. Other than that, the deleted scenes weren't really all that great. I can see why some of them were cut out. Okay. Except for like this this one brilliant scene when they've shown the, the, the crew their quarters, because there's this one scene where you know how they feed them and whatnot, completely to how their characters act. So like everyone gets all like the sweet junk food, and Alan Rickman gets bugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was a scene cut up when they were showing like their quarters, and um, <laughs> like apparently most of that scene was lost. They only had the Alan Rickman part. And they showed him his room. His room was completely empty for lack of distraction. Then he was like, where do I sleep? Then they clap their hands and a huge spike bed comes up from the ground. And he's just looking at it in horror. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and, and, of course, you know, there's, he's pretty much got an apprentice in there who studies characters. Like, yeah, it took me a while to get used to the spikes, too. But once I did, oh, I had such pleasant night's sleeps. Then, of course, of course, the question he asks is, where's the bathroom in this place? And they showed the bathroom, and all this is just like, just, he's like, eh, your bathroom was a bit tricky to um, patch together, because they never, you never really explain that in the historical archives, how you went toilet. <laughs> so we had to guess by, by your way of living, and all it was was just like, a toilet bowl, but with a huge spike coming out of it. It's like, yeah, yeah, your people are weird. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Alright. So that was Galaxy Quest. Um, Galaxy I, I, Quest, I, I, explained poorly by me, that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I think you did a good job. But uh, I think I want to talk about Dick Tracy a little bit. Now, is Dick Tracy really a cult film? Because I had a look at it, and it actually made a fair amount at the box office. But I guess it's kind of more like a forgotten film, if anything. Because it yeah. was because it was really big for like that one summer in 1990 or whenever it was released, and then everybody just kind of forgot about it. It was like made at the it was made in the aftermath of the Batman Tim Burton movie. So it was during that time when comic book movies were kind of trying to get a foothold because you know Dick Tracy is a comic strip, and I, I had always assumed that this movie kind of bombed as well. But actually, it did do a decent amount of business. It just I guess it didn't become like you know super super. Uh, popular and who was the guy who played him in that i forget i haven't seen the movie since i was a little kid he's the guy who flubbed the oscars this year said the wrong uh he said the wrong uh best picture or something (laughs) Uh, i hope they could all swim a what you said flood the oscars right flubbed (laughs) oh flubbed (laughs) (laughs) No, that guy, that guy who who announced the incorrect uh, uh, best picture. He was one of Hang the presenters. On, I'm getting the DVD. I'm cheating. <laughs> yeah, because he directed the movie. He directed the movie too, didn't he? Warren Betty. Warren Betty, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen the movie in years, so don't blame me if I get but, stuff wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what I th- I think he took a, like a hiatus from acting. He's only like recently made it back into show business recently because that would make sense because i haven't really heard his name in other movies other than that yeah but he was like a he was a big actor in the 90s and uh well early late late 80s early 90s was when he had his heyday he made a shit ton of money and then he stopped acting in movies for a while and most recently he came back but like he you know he had to you know he even like publicly apologized because well, he noticed that it was maybe wrong, but then because uh, the, he, who, whoever he, he was hosting with uh, c- didn't like react to it at all, he, he, he then then blurted out, blurted out the wrong the wrong thing. I'm I'm sorry, but every time I hear about the, those Oscars, I always picture the scene from Naked Gun, thirty three and a third, when he, <laughs> when he pulls out, "It's the bomb." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
that is a that is a fucking great uh, scene, by the way. It's the bomb. <laughs> but no, actually, Dick Tracy, it is a good movie. That's the thing. Like, I, I actually think it's a that is a legit good movie. But uh, yeah, I, it's one of those things. Like people people completely kind of forgot about it after it came out. But uh, it has that same kid actor who was also in the Hook movie. Remember the kid? <laughs> Hello. Nope. You, you remember the kid from the movie, though? Yeah. Which one? Dick Tracy. We're talking about Dick, Dick Tracy. Tracy was... <laughs> I thought we were talking about the kid from the Hook movie. It's the same kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh... I haven't seen the Hook movie in years, too. <laughs> yeah, but it's that same child actor, and then they... I, I, I think his girlfriend... Am I, am I mixing this up, or was the girlfriend the same actress as in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It was Bob Hoskins' girlfriend in that. And Al Pacino is the bad guy, and Madonna's also in it. So it's got, like, big, big stars... And it was a, it, it is a comic book movie, but I guess it's m- more like, uh, not cyberpunk, what do we call it? Techie, uh, noir. D- detective. Uh, noir. Is it really noir? Okay, well, Probably. okay, we'll go with that. Yeah, but, but we got to think it's Dicky, because Dicky, the original, um, <laughs> the original comic strip, just... the original comic strip. Call... Yep. I thought you called him Sticky Dicky for a second. <laughs> no, I said Dicky <laughs> twice. The Dick, Dick, the Dick Tracy comics, they were kind of like these, they were just kind of these, like, fun action comics, really. Yeah, they were. They, they were very similar to, like, the Flash Gordons and whatnot. Like, they, they came in, like, or I should say, same as Garfield, they came in, like, those thick, like, they were short, but they were wide. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the thing I'm getting at, is, like, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have considered, like, the Dick Tracy comics to be noir anything, because I think they were being published before film. Oh, before. Pulp! Isn't that what we're trying to think of? Pulpish. Pulp, yeah. It's more pulp than noir, perhaps. But are you saying that the movie itself is more noir? I don't know. I was just trying to ask you. I haven't seen the movie in years. I was hoping... <laughs> <laughs> I wish okay, I then. So this is going to be a short discussion, then. <laughs> this is going to be yes. a really short discussion. Well, anyway, I, I, was, remember, I, re- I remember the movie I was, being very good. I remember the movie being very good. I remember it being good as a kid, too. The thing that stuck out for me and stuck in my mind, though, was how interesting the characters looked, though. Yeah, that's and the then. thing. That's, that's what I was, I was getting at that, too, is that it was very faithful. Because, you know, Dick Tracy had these really... You know, very grotesque bad guys who all all had this oh, like, weird deformed... Oh, definitely deform- nightmare fuel. It's like, how are people born like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they have these like weird deformities. It's like great makeup work and like real attention to detail. Like it, it is, it is like a uh, yeah. And if people have forgotten about that, like fucking go check it out. It's a, actually a really good. It's a really good yep, fu- fucking movie. I plan on watching it after this recording's over. Thank you. Which yes. is very awkward. If we did this tomorrow. And I would have had a fresh take on Galaxy Quest and Dick Tracy. <laughs> okay, well, we've talked to... Well, that's two movies again done. I guess we, mm. we could go back to another cancelled video series. Okay, so... Actually, these last two are going to be... These last two videos that I need to discuss, they're both going to be Dragon Ball related. So, do you remember, Kaiser... You know, we, we've established that you do not have the greatest of memories. But do you oh, remember... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was that low blow. Do you remember a series called Dragon Ball Son Goku? No? <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, me no. Either. No, nobody else, else does either. And okay, Dragon Ball Son Goku was... This is another canceled series. And I actually had to take a look yesterday. I'd forgotten. I, I thought we only made the one episode, but we actually got two episodes out of this, which is surprises, surprises the hell out of me. Uh, and so this is a lesson again, kiddies. To pay attention. Uh, don't make video series, you know, with uh, a girlfriend, spouse, significant other, because there might be a, se- a point at which you know the relationship ends, and when they're doing like fifty percent of the show, you know, the the show, the, the, after that, there's no show. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a this is was a Dragon Ball fan series I did back in I don't even remember when we did this. Oh wait. Uh, Yes, I do. This was like, this was either later, late 2006 or early 2007, one or the other. And this is in a, this belongs into a series, this is a, this is a video, cancelled video series that uh, represents a long and arduous struggle I had with trying to make a serious cartoon. Like, uh, but this wasn't like a cartoon specifically because it was more like, it was more like a comic book with music and sound effects and voice acting. So we were drawing these characters. It was mostly still images, but there was a story going on. And it was a Dragon Ball fan series. So it wasn't 
said like in the main Dragon Ball continuity. It was its own thing. I was using like re- I don't think I created too many new characters. We're all, all like background fodder, basically, if at, if at all. I was using reestablished characters and just kind of recasting in them in different roles. Mr. Popo actually had a big part in this, which was kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, and it's I did two episodes. We did two episodes of it. Never really went anywhere. Weird thing I'd forgotten about this. This was it was a bilingual series. So all the aliens spoke English and all the Earthlings spoke Finnish. And that was a whole thing. I had subtitles when. Oh, know, are, you, are you calling us English language folk evil aliens? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess because I was voice acting most of the villains, I wanted to do it in English. I don't know. I had a whole bunch of weird ideas for this. And this is the one, this is the reason, um, well, one of the, well, the primary reason why you're never going to see this series again uh, is because, again, it used licensed music. I mean, the the intro to this song, if you haven't, actually, so if you haven't heard about this show, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, this is from the deep past. But... The main song, the theme song, was "Run for Cover" by Gary Moore, and the ending, the cre- ending credits song was uh, Te- uh, "Winds of Change" by not the Scorpions, but by Bruce Dickinson, which was a different song altogether. So, yes, and the the thing I wanted to, so, so the thing because it was a fan series and it wasn't set in the main continuity, I had this thing that I was doing with it where. Um, just to set it apart, because I was recasting and reorganizing, it, it had its own kind of interesting mythos. The thing that I did to separate it from everything else, and I'm not the only one that uh, thinks this way, but I did something that was kind of interesting. I did, I did a Goku Bulma ship uh, for the show. <laughs> oh, I don't think Chi Chi would have been too happy about that. Well, she didn't exist in the show, so that's what's my excuse. <laughs> So, but like that's always been. I always kind of well. I was kind of. That's always well, something I've wondered about. You know, and don't get me wrong. I had nothing against Gigi, and I don't even have anything against like the Bulma Vegeta. You know, which is the canon one uh, ship. But it it, it uh, is. But yeah, this is probably the reason. Like you know, it's probably better that this show isn't on anymore. That this show isn't on YouTube say, anymore. And also, it, it can. It, I can't upload it anymore because. You know, there's licensed music in it as well. Yep, sorry. Okay, I was trying to say, is it trying to make it more like the original Dragon Ball mythos? That was just Goku and Bulma. Uh, no, no, no. This was this was uh, in the kind of roughly timeline wise same place as Dragon Ball Z, but like I said, it's 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 a different continuity. So yeah, and this is this this belongs. I could tell a whole story about this. You know how I. Uh, about a bunch of cartoons, which when I did the Robot Master ones and things like that, that those were like comedy, and I was happy with that. But then I tried to do, then I tried to do like a serious one, and this was one of those failed attempts. Another one that I did was called Heroes International, which I think I we got into. I got fifty percent of the first episode completed, and it never saw the light of day. That's a good name, by the way. It sounds like a really good. Um, it, it was a superhero. Hero. It was a superhero show, and I never got. Uh, through it, and the the thing, the the one thing that did finally come out of all of this, and which I'm I'm still really proud of it, is the first and the only episode of Alliance Lost, which was the sci-fi cartoon, uh, which I did, and I, I'm still proud of it. So people can go check that out if they want. But yeah, this this is where this belongs. This is this is this belongs in that thing. All right. Uh, so we got still a bunch of. Uh, unless you want to add something to that, like we could do, do another class, cult classic movie. <laughs> no, I'm I'm done. I'm fumbling up way too much. I'm embarrassed of myself, so I think I'm just going to go in the corner and cry. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask at least a couple of movies. Uh, I want to okay. ask about. Uh, well, you said you hadn't watched this, but I saw it, and I'm super jealous now. You have a copy of Enemy Mine. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> it's from Wolfgang Peterson, the director of such classic movies as Dust Bot, my, my favorite, one of my favorite submarine movies, and then, of course, well, the submarine movie, I would say. And then, uh, of course, The Neverending Story. An Enemy Mine is a sci-fi film that he did. It's about it uh, a human and an alien who get stranded on a, on a planet, and they have to work together to survive. Uh, it's, a, it's a very... 
interesting. I never saw the whole movie, but I saw a good bunch of it, especially like the thing which you had completely forgotten about, which we talked about this, uh, is that the alien dude gets pregnant at one point. <laughs> <laughs> like, so... Uh, so that was it. That was interesting, and I, that's something I have to check out at one point. Another one I have not seen it, but I kind of you have. So I want to ask the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. <laughs> yes, here's one that I'm quite confident I can explain quite well. What do you want to know about it? Well, what what's it about? Maybe maybe give the general rundown. Essentially, the story is it's just about news reporters and a, and a police officer trying to figure out. Trying to catch the Punisher? Well, that's actually no. AKA Frank rewind, Castle, rewind, rewind, who's rewind. a Marvel, Marvel Comics character. Yes. Rewind, rewind. Like, yeah, it's it's about the Punisher who's going around, you know, just killing mafia, random mafia. But it comes to a point in the story where a certain police officer starts to investigate the whole thing, and um, a weird point is like when the the Yakuza start kidnapping all of the mafia's children. Interesting. So it gets to the so it gets to the point where Frank Castle has to team up with the Mafia in order to rescue the children. Because while he doesn't care about the um, the Mafia and stuff, they think they can all run hell and kill each other. But when it comes to children, he, he feels starts to feel a bit bad because they're technically innocents in his eyes, and he doesn't want the innocents to die. Oh, yeah. Is it? Okay, so there was, there was another Punisher movie that was made in the early 2000s. Which one do you prefer, that one or the Dolph Lundgren one? <laughs> Obviously the Dolph Lundgren one, because I haven't seen the one starring Titus. Oh, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. There was another one, wasn't there? Or am I? Yeah, Warzone. Oh yeah, yeah. I've had seen. I haven't seen. I, well, I haven't and, seen any of them. So. But and I, he's yes. getting his own Netflix series. Well, of course, because everybody has their own fucking Netflix series now. <laughs> but yeah, I, that that one, that one again. Every fuck, you know. I would say the, the, all the Wolfgang Pre- Peterson movies are definitely on my bucket list. The Punisher and pretty much every movie Dolph Lundgren has been in is kind of on my bucket list right now. But especially like the ones from the late '80s and early '90s. Those are the ones that I really, really need to see more of because. I really like Dolph Lundgren, and I think you know I want to see uh, see more of them. I, I oh, he's an excellent Punisher. He's an excellent Frank Castle in general. Oh yeah, yeah. That, another one that I haven't seen to my eternal shame, and I do, and I would really, really want to is Universal Soldier. Be- and that one because that one also has Jean Claude Van Damme, so that's another Van Damme film mm-hmm. that I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. Another right. damn Van Damme film. But the other thing about the 1989 Punisher movie that you probably might not be aware of is that it was filmed in Australia. It is an Australian Punisher film. I, I, I think I saw your tweet or maybe right on Facebook about that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's in this. <laughs> so, so it's, 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 yeah. it's, uh, is it, is it, was it in Sydney? Or? Yes. Yes. They try to make it look like, they try to make it look like it's somewhere in New York, but you're like, Bullshit. <laughs> Are there any like it, obvious giveaways? <laughs> well, there's no tall buildings. Everything's on the be- on the beach, and, and every and every extra in the movie speaks Australian. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like Rumble in the Bronx as well. You've seen that one, right? No. Oh, that's it. That's the, that's the uh, Jackie Chan movie, obviously. But uh, but it's obvious, you know, again, that's also supposed to be, because it's the Bronx, it's supposed to be set in New York, but it's so very obviously Canada. And, like, the thing that really gives it away is when one of the criminals takes one of the street punks and they put him in a wood chipper, basically. Uh, outside of town, you can see these fucking mountains. You know, you know, New York's glorious mountains. <laughs> so that, that 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 always fucking like everything else I could buy, but that's the one where it really like, oh fuck no. <laughs> oh, there was Nicolas Cage movie where he's running away from some government. It was like we're in Boston, man. We gotta stop things. And it's, I was like, bullshit. That's Boston. I've been in that car park he was running in. That's Melbourne. That's right next. That's right next to the museum, the exhibition center. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if that's the case, I've been to bloody Boston. Like, look at that! You can see the the aquarium back there too. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. It's also another thing you often notice when they shooting movies in Canada uh, that are supposed to be set in the United States. When you see like signs. And they may have like words like color in them that have a U if you're Canadian, or, but not yeah. Or some written some written in dual languages, English and French. Yeah, well, that's even more. Yeah, that's definitely more of a dead giveaway. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to the Punisher? 
oh, it is a very gloriously shot movie. Very, it's ultra stylistic, much like the comic books. All right, yeah. Um, and again, that, that's yeah, another yeah. movie that did come out like after, or did it, did it come a, after or before the Tim Burton Batman? 1989, so I have no idea. Same, same, year, same year. Same year. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. And but the thing that I love, the glorious how shots, especially the shots I especially like, is when he's um in the sewers, just riding his motorbike, because that's how he gets around in the movie. Remains <laughs> unseen. Is in, is he runs around in the sewers, running around the I sewers think... in a motorbike. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um. It's also pretty darn violent, as you'd expect from a Punisher movie. Oh yeah, yeah, um, I would, I would expect so. Yeah. And the thing about the version I've got is, it's got three. It's got. It's actually got three different versions of the film, all on the one disc. Oh really? It's got the. Um, it's got the HD theatrical release, which surprisingly enough, it only. The thing I found out about that movie through through the documentary is, it was planned for like a theater release in like America, then it got demoted to a straight to video release. Ooh. Although it did come out in cinema in certain countries in in Europe. Oh yeah. Okay. But yeah, but the other two versions includes the theatrical release. It also includes the director's cut, which has some of the violent scenes cut cut out, put back in. Which ah, hey, pardon, pardon me. There we go. Which is it's funny watching that version. Which is it's the version that I watched, but it's funny when you see the stuff that was cut out, put back in. It it, it it can tell that it was cut from it was put in from a different source because suddenly it's all nice and clear. Then it's all grainy for some reason. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it cuts back to something. And the third version that's on here is the work print version, which I wish that I watched that version instead because that one's got more scenes that ended up being cut from the uncut version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, but that that's that tends to happen with like especially like movies in uh from that era like if they put in like um like deleted scenes like that like film uh archiving that kind of stuff doesn't really you know it it, it didn't used to be a thing because you know DVDs weren't still a thing so people didn't see the value in like st- storing up that old stuff so that's so when it gets mm-hmm. put back in like I can understand where where the graininess comes from okay Alrighty then, so, uh, anything else about the Punisher? Yes, if you may have noticed from looking at the screens, he doesn't have his skull shirt on in this one. Oh, he doesn't? That's the... Okay. No, he does not. Instead, he has his skulls on his knives. And they actually explain why he doesn't have his shirt. It's like, the problem is, um, it would have made him look a little bit silly. Because the people that made this movie, they were fans of of the Punisher. That's probably why it turned out well, because they actually read the comics. And they were like, the difference is in the comics, like, he's, he wears, like, the skull shirt, but it's also, like, a weird spandex suit. Like, in this one, they just wanted to make him look like just, you know, like a normal dude. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Which, you know, a much more natural look, which he may not have the skull shirt in this one, but I do think he's still recognizable as the Punisher. Oh, yeah. All right. And, um, I don't want to talk, talk much about it, because I know you wanted to watch this one. don't know if you've seen it or not. No, yeah, no, I've never seen it. I haven't seen any of the Punisher movies, like I said. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. So oh, there is. Yep. Sorry. There is one scene you might like, it. like you might like the way the um, because as I said, everything is shot super stylistic in this one, including all the action scenes. Which what the hell was that? Someone fell. Um, <laughs> which <laughs> sorry, which definitely applies to the violence, which makes them look very um very gruesome, like adds that layer of, of gruesome there. But it's also got that very over the top layer to it. Considering there's this one scene where um Frank battles ninjas and the funny <laughs> he's like he, And then I'll just and <laughs> Sorry. Because you know he's fine he's fine the Yakuza. So he has to fight ninjas. <laughs> wow. And the, the the scene that takes place is awesome because it's like an abandoned <laughs> like um it's like at an abandoned like fun like a theme park. Yeah. And so the way the ninjas are introduced is like he hears something and they all come sliding on like the super long slippy slides. They're just firing their machine guns at them. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> you just reminded me. You just reminded me. Like the, there's nothing that cracks me up faster than seeing a fucking ninja in a movie because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> but it, even more so, like I just recently, I I complete, I finally 
did something. I finally caught up to every single X Men movie. So like, like last weekend, literally, I went and uh, I watched the last two X Men movies that I haven't seen, which were The Wolverine and Logan. And The Wolverine is, is the movie is basically Wolverine in Japan. It's that that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm in Japan now. Here's some. Here's some Yakuza goons. Here's some, like, fucking ninjas. That's actually a big part to his um, origin story in the comics, too, him being in Japan. Yeah, 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 but this is different because... That, that's the thing that surprised me is that... Well, it's, it's kind of, like, already hinted at by the opening of the movie. But, like, it's actually a direct sequel to Last Stand. So it's actually, like, the last movie of the old continuity. But, like, that's the thing. Like, the minute the fucking ninjas show up, like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> uh, uh, the first thing that comes to mind now is like, here, here come the ninjas! Do, 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 do. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we've talked. I think we're done. I think this mini cast yes. has turned into a regular cast. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but I have one more video. I have one more video to talk about. Ooh, the, do so tell. This is the last one. This is the last one. Okay, like I said, like nothing, like I said, nothing on the channel is ever completely lost. I have it stored somewhere. I talk except for that Police Academy video. Uh, and then there are some videos that I can't re-upload. Uh, I, I really wouldn't want to re-upload Dragon Ball Son Goku, but I, also I can't because it uses licensed music. But there is also, but there is one video which I have made a conscious decision not to re-upload. And like I said, this is this one is also Dragon Ball related. So I'm wondering, do, do you have even the vaguest memory of a cartoon called Popo's Back? Pardon? What was that? Postpone's po- Back? Popo's Back, yeah. That sounds vaguely familiar. All right, so, okay. This is a cartoon from the old days, and, uh, you know, a lot of my very old cartoons, like the... The, the, the Metal Poop Shits, the Robot Master <laughs> cartoons, the, the one-off Street Fighter cartoon that I did. Uh, you know, a lot of those had the problem. They suffered from the talking head syndrome. So it was always, uh, it was always um, characters just standing around and talking. Like, all the animation was just talk. And uh, it really took me a long while. And it re- really, the Robot Masters were kind of where I was pushing it a bit more, where there was actually something physically going on. But while I was still in that head zone, well, that was, that was that was funny how that came together. I was, <laughs> I meant as in like mentally, but yes, in that when we, when I was still in that talking head phase of making cartoons, like I was still trying to find ways to kind of push the cartoons further verbally, if you will. And so I don't know. I had this obsession about doing. I still do this actually. I just recently do do this kind of you know comic format as well. But I have this thing about like people asking fictional characters questions and them answering them. And that's what this po- Popo's back cartoon was. It was Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball answering questions uh, in exclamation. Uh, I mean, uh, in quotations <laughs> from the viewers or whatever. Okay, and. Also, yes, there was licensed music. I could have cut it out. And big surprise, Popo's back. The song that I used for it was an Eminem song. Guess who's back? <laughs> back again. Shady's back. Tell a friend. Yes. <clears throat> so that that whole thing. Okay. Now the reason Popo's back will not ever make it, uh, will not ne- never ever be re-uploaded to the channel, is because the way I did Mr. Popo's voice in that cartoon. I did Mr. Popo's voice in the Dragon Ball Son Koku one, but that was more the way he talked in, you know, regular Dragon Ball. This Mr. Popo talked oh with a stereotypical black voice. <laughs> and there was a there was and you know, besides that there was like nothing like super, you know, even vaguely racist about it. I was just doing a stereotypical black voice. You know, and this was in, this was also a non-scripted cartoon, so it was all ad lib as well. So it had a kind of it had that weird flow. Like if you listen to like the early Metal Poop shit cartoons, they had kind of had that same thing. But but uh, the one line the one line from the cartoon, which I to this day I think I must have been somewhat proud of it, but I did think really bad. Uh, so, sounds really bad. Was the fact that there was the one? It was like the last question in the cartoon. Was the, it was like it was asking like, "What does Mister? What do you, Mister Popo? What do you like to do on your free time?" Uh, and 
as the character, I answered truthfully, which was like, you know, Mr. Popo likes gardening. You know, he's always taking care of Kami's lookout. But then it, it ended with the words, I really like, I really like the earth and dirt because it's black like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! And that was oh, like, dear. and that was the point at which, like, the car is is, is then it, then it, po Mr. Popo just does the you know see you, see you next time or whatever the whatever the goodbyes were, and you know like I said anybody who knows Dragon Ball and knows what Mr. Popo is all about will get what the joke is you know ha ha, -ha he look you know the way he looks stereotypical black voice whatever um. So Mr. Popo, like a bunch of the other cards, like all of my content, you know, it got taken down when my old channel got taken down. And then I do recall that I might have re-uploaded it to my second channel, but then it got taken down again because it used the Eminem song in the intro. And at this point, like enough time had passed from when I made the cartoon where I started thinking about, you know what... You know, Dragon Ball fans will get that this is, you know, that this is not racist. This is just me goofing around with a very well-known character from the series. You would have to know what Dragon Ball even is to write Popo's back into a YouTube search to even, like, look for it. But I got, but I got the twinge of fear. And when I get the twinge of fear is when, you know, bad shit can happen. I get the twinge of fear, like... There is, like, you know, a possibility that somebody who has no idea what Dragon Ball is, has no idea what this character is, mm -hmm. might accidentally stumble upon it. And just because the character looks the way he looks, might mis misinterpret it, you know, in a, in, in a way that, is, that does not look good for me. So... I so especially I went, in today's day and age where everyone's especially well, exactly, about everything. That, yes, exactly. That's what I'm getting at. Is like, and considering what the climate on YouTube is right now, I made absolutely the right decision to not re-upload that fucking cartoon, and I am <laughs> I am still holding on to that decision. I am never ever gonna re-upload Popo's back. But it is a cartoon that I did, and I do think I have to owe up to it. There might still be some really old-school subscribers that may have a vague memory of this particular cartoon. I look back at it now, it's not really that funny anymore. And, like, my cartoons, like, they... Like, even, like, immediately after that, my cartoons got so much better that, like, re-uploading it doesn't really make much sense to me anymore. So that's another thing. But basically, that's the reason, because I'm so afraid now that somebody who has no idea what this is is going to look at it and just yell and just going to yell racist because they said because it's Mr. Popo who's a who's not even who isn't actually even you know he's not even human he's a jinn he's it's, a, it's especially a, since we're especially since so don't take this the wrong way you're a white dude people are going to take a special oh yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That that has occurred to me. Uh, that didn't stop me doing Balrog's voice in the Street Fighter cartoon, but that's because it was a Mike Tyson impression, basically. So mm -hmm. <laughs> a really exaggerated Mike Tyson impression. So, you know, I got away with that. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I, needed, I, I think I needed to address that because there might be some old school old school uh, fans of this channel who might remember that particular cartoon and might wonder why isn't it on anymore and because it wouldn't be a big deal for me to just remove that opening song again and just upload it because there's no music in the actual cartoon but because of the what the cartoon actually is that's why I'm not ever I'm never ever re-uploading it uh, all right this is this is bad when you first mentioned Popo's back like I wanted to say it's a while while a while back uh, um <laughs> But I didn't want to interrupt the thing. But when you, when the first thing that came to mind was um, Pops from Homestar Runner dressed up as Mr. Popo. Ah, uh, who? Not Pops. Bobs. Ah! Bobs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bobs. I can't believe I fucked that up. Thing that. <laughs> yeah, I was. That was confusing. <laughs> that was. That was bad. All right. All right. So, so, hey. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we just witnessed history. We just talked about two things we wanted to figure about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But, uh, so, um, do you want to talk any more classic movies, or, 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 or is this the point where we start wrapping, wrapping it up? Ah, oh, this, this is the point. All right, so. I think, we've, I think we've done enough. I think that's a good closer. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. We've still got many more White Devil minis to go in the future. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and we we might even do we might even do a full White Devil just talking about cult classic movies. We've got to bring up like uh, Dorothea yep. and uh, and some, somebody possibly somebody else as well. And that, that would and be watch cool. Idle Hands. That could be a good podcast all on its own. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. So I guess that's where we'll end it. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and. See you on the next one, Kaiser. Say goodbye to the audience. Goodbye. I'm embarrassed. I'm gonna go and my. I'm gonna go have a cold shower and cry myself to sleep. Bye bye.